Hey everybody, welcome to the aftermath of our Thursday, April 4th, 2013 show. We've been talking about women a lot lately. Strong, accomplished, magnificent women, but what some people seem to feel about them, that there's a natural extension that if there's a strong woman and she's, say, in the Marines, and that's going to be a strong woman, that that must mean she should be in combat. Or if there's a fantastic women's basketball player like Brittany Griner at Baylor, love her, love those Baylor Bear uh, women's teams and the men's teams too. They're in the NIT championship tonight at Madison Square Garden against Iowa. Go Bears. But the women's team just finished their season. Brittany Griner is maybe one of the best women's college basketball players around here or in history or in there somewhere. She's 6'8", she's big, she's tough. And so, of course, in today's crazy world of pedal to the metal, where does the natural extension go? Well, she must need to be in the NBA. What? Mark Cuban, owner of the Mavericks, is thinking about drafting her. Now, let me spend a moment on the Marine ladies first. Do you call a lady Marine a lady? <laughs> you better. <laughs> anyway, uh, even though they are, are, are probably big strapping examples of, of strong human beings, they've been put in, four of them have now, two more this past week have been put into the same combat infantry readiness course as the men, and they've just failed miserably. I mean, who didn't see this coming? I hate to refer to it as failure because I never had any expectation that they would uh, that they would succeed. If I try to run a marathon in under three hours, I will fail. Uh, but one would think that there's some human expectation that maybe I could do that. At least not, not on my part, but some human expectation. If I tell you I'm going to scale a 50-foot building using just my hands, but I fail, it's almost not really failure because what was I doing even trying in the first place? There are strong women Marines who can serve with distinction. This crazy societal petri dish notion that we got to put them in combat with the men is crazy. Now let's go to college basketball. Brittany Griner, she's great. NBA? No! Now, d d can, can Cuban draft her? Sure. Would it be an interesting kind of quirky bit, kind of a PR stunt to see how far she made it through the developmental league or something? Yes. But ultimately, that too will end in failure, a point at which this proud, wonderful, accomplished woman would have to say, whew, those guys are huge. And I got, I, I got knocked around like a pinball out there on that court, because that's exactly what would happen. Does this mean that she's not strong, that she's not great? No, but why in the world do we feel this odd natural extension? This is the season for such things. It's kind of weird. Take it from this, from the fact that you could never be gay in public, to you could sort of be gay in public, but you better not talk about marrying somebody of the same sex, to where now we talk about you know the states allowing that to happen. But now, the, na the so-called natural extension is, we must allow it to happen, because extending full recognition of gay gay marriage is that's just the next place you go. Well, guess what? No, it's not. Not in all cases. And in the case of strong women in the Marines and strong women uh, in basketball, to presume a kind of a natural extension for them that they must be in there with the men, it, it evades one of the basic facts of human life. Women are incredibly strong, in many ways stronger than men. Exhibit A, childbirth. That's all I need to say. But in terms of raw athletic prowess, uh, look, Danica Patrick made this a little more complicated, and God bless her. Uh, to her great credit, she proved that a woman can indeed compete, not just compete, but compete at the top levels of NASCAR. Well, there'll be the occasional sport where that happens, but it'll be rare, and the NBA will not be one of them. Uh, Brittany Griner's going to get eaten alive on an NBA court, and I don't want that for her. I, I don't know. I don't, now, here's the thing. I kind of understand, because what else is she going to do? She could go into the WNBA and vanish from the known universe because nobody cares about those games. So I kind of sympathize, but um, if, if she wants if free country, Cuban can draft her. We can all and listen. I'd pay. A, I'd, I'd buy a ticket and go see those games. I absolutely would. I, you know, I, I'm a big fan of the occasional wheels off human experiment. But just be aware of what lies down the road. And if everybody's okay with that, okay. But let us dispense with this crazy notion that at some point we're going to have a lot of women in the Marines who can do just what the men do. We won't, or a lot of women in the NBA who can play with the men. We won't. Sorry for the clarity burst, but it's it's what I do for a living. If you disagree, bring it. That's what the show is there for, 7 to 10 on weekdays, Monday through Thursday. If you're watching this on Thursday, tomorrow is our Friday marathon. Woohoo, for Rangers opening day Friday. <laughs> uh, what's my line I came up with last night? Josh Hamilton, now ex-Ranger of the Angels now. I think he's staying away from alcohol these days, but tomorrow at the game, he'll be drowning in booze. B-O-O-S. <laughs>
Yeah, wasn't that great? So anyway, it's Rangers opening day for a Friday. We'll talk about that. And of course, five hours, three hours on Bill Bennett's Morning in America, uh, five to eight. And then locally for Texas, we'll wrap up the week. You know, what do you do about crazy Kim Jong-un, the Kaufman uh, DA situation, just all manner of things to talk about. So we will on the Mark Davis Show right here on 660 AM The Answer. And thanks for hanging out for these exercises and stream of consciousness here on 660 AM The Answer.com.